Hi, I'm Cinder with Choice Medical Group, our Senior Kicks Club. Today we're going to be working on one of our painting projects. We're calling this one our Rainbow Willow. This painting is going to be done on a regular canvas. You can use any kind of canvas board you want. In this case, we're going to be just using a smaller canvas. That is that thing. We're going to be setting out our rainbow colors of paint. The most paint you're going to be using is going to be of the white. You're going to need some Q-tips and your paint brushes. Some of you may find you're more comfortable using a sponge brush for the background. The colors, again, that you're going to need. All of these acrylics, the rainbow colors. As we go through the painting, we're going to first do a background. You will use a dryer then to dry it. We'll come in and do the hillside and the tree trunk. We will again dry it. We will then do our rainbow, dry it one more time. The hair dryer really comes in handy for this. And then we will finish off by just doing our last little branches. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to get started now. This particular project, we want to make it look like it's a stormy day and that in order to get this effect and that I'm going to make a mixture of grays and whites. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to coat this whole thing with white and that and that's going to make sure that I have the ability to streak this and make sure that it's completely covered also. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to get into this. Now, if you're using a higher quality acrylic, you obviously will not uh, need to put out this much white, but this is not the highest quality, but we're going to go with it because it works. Let's get this whole thing painted white real fast. We want to keep our get our rainbow colors out there too. And yeah, as soon as I get a good coating all the way around this, then I'm going to go ahead and start doing my stormy streaks. Now, for some of you, you'll find that these streaks are much easier made with a sponge. And it's the same effect that we use when we do a wood background on some things. And that is, I've probably showed you that in some other videos. Let me get this. Hopefully you can see real quick here. Just making sure that I'm completely covered so that I don't miss anything when I'm doing my streaks. This is supposed to be our relaxing time, so we want to make sure that we're enjoying what we do too. So I have a good coating now down off white across the entire canvas. I'm already getting it on my fingers. As you know, I'm never particularly tidy when this does. So I want to get this. I'm going to mix a little bit of a gray here. Won't take much black in here. And I'm not going to mix it really a bunch. I'm just going to kind of push it into my brush, dabbing it in. And then we're going to start, and we're going to do this at an angle to give it that sweepy kind of stormy look. So starting up in our corner up here, we want our storm to come down this way to the opposite corner. So I'm just going to put streaks in here. Again, this is just to kind of give us that stormy look. It doesn't have to be solid. kind of pulling it up on the end here so I can bring it over the sides. This end down here, we're not going to worry too much about getting the storm in there because this is going to be part of our little hilltop. Again, just sweep this in. This is our stormy, stormy look. Add a little more dab of black in there too, I think. I want to make sure that we get that. And as you know, in a storm, not all the clouds and not all the sky is the same color. We're going to have different textures throughout the sky. So if you have lighter in one spot, darker in another, don't worry about it too much. You can blend it down. Most important thing is we're just wanting it to look stormy. I think I want to add just a tiny bit darker. So I'm going to put a little bit more black on here. Just push it into my bristles. Again, you'll find some of you like doing this much better with a 
sponge to really get that look. Okay, so now we've got our streaks in here and that for our stormy sky. I've used the hair dryer to get this dried down so that we don't get any smudges because I have a habit of sticking my hands in the middle of things. So let's now get in our hillside here and, that, and our tree trunk. And we're just going to take this side here and kind of about, oh, this, so about this far up the page here or the canvas, we're going to get that in going to give us some little dots and give us a, a guideline of where we approximately want our hill. So I'm going to fill this in. And I've used a little bit smaller brush for this, hoping that we can kind of get this smaller space. It's not as large as the sky was, so I wanted to definitely downsize. You can still use a little bit bigger brush for this, but I've chosen to kind of downsize. Again, if you're using a different kind of acrylic, you'll notice that you don't need as much. you're not completely dry, you are going to get some gray streaking in there. You can go back over it later. Use your black and you can get that out. So we're just going to get the basics of our hillside in here. It doesn't have to be exact and perfect because no hillside is. And then I want to figure out approximately, and I'm looking at this picture in the background and right about here is where I'm going to want that trunk. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to build my trunk up in here and I want it to look like it's waving in the wind so I'm going to kind of come up and swoop it around. It's going to be a little thicker at the bottom and it's going to come up here. It'll stay thick and then it'll start to thin out. We're going to leave that just like that. I'm going to put that, rinse that brush out a little bit. And I'm going to go to a much smaller brush now. And on the smaller brush, I'm going to take, so that I can get these little bits of the grass as it shows against the back, the black background, or the gray background, and that these are going to be our little grass pieces. And all you do to get those, and I'll see if I can get it at an angle, I can do this. We're just going to make little flicks, and you're going to up and brush, and up and brush, and just flick it, flick it nicely. Doesn't have to be perfect, just flick it. Doesn't have to be solid, the wisps. And you're going to put this grass in all the way down your hillside. Starting thicker at the bottom, and when you flick up, it'll become thinner. It's okay if you go over the grass that you've had there before. Because remember, this isn't a storm. These blades are going to be all over the place. The reason you're going to start with your flicks at the bottom is because as you flick your paintbrush, you will realize that the first strokes are not the thin strokes. It's when you flick the end strokes and they pull up and they become thinner. And with the dark background, don't worry if they were too thick or too thin. 
because as your grass comes up with this darkness like this, you're not going to notice the bunches of grass. You're just going to see the parts that the setting sun or the sun in the background is going to be coming on. I think I'm just going to do a little bit more down here. Give it some different pieces. Maybe a couple more here at the base of my tree. And I'm going to come in here a little bit. I'm going to just make sure I've just tightened up the sides of my tree. Now the next part's the fun part. Now you're thinking I've left out the branches, and I've done that intentionally. Because the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I get my rainbow in there. Some of you may decide that you prefer to do this with just autumn colors and not our rainbow effect. But for me, I wanted to make sure that I had something that was really fun and bright, vibrant. So I went with the rainbow colors. Painting this is easy. All you have to do is take your Q-tips, three or four gathered together. We're gonna hold them now. If it's easier for you, take a little piece of tape or a rubber band and put these together to hold it. We're gonna start with the red. Just gonna dip it in a little bit and make sure that it's not too heavy. And then I'm gonna start putting my tree in. Super, super simple here. Want a little more, wanna make sure it's not too heavy, dab it off. going to give it a windswept look, so you're going to push it to the side a little. And because this is your tree, you go ahead and do as many or as little of one color as you like. And now I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to dip it in my orange. Dab that off. And now I'm going to add some of the orange. Some of it you're going to blend right over the top of the red. That's quite all right. The rainbow colors are not tight next to each other. They're blended. So this is going to just add a prettiness to this. Add a little more. If you think you'd like it to be a little bit heavier, go ahead and do it heavier. It's quite all right. Remember, this is your project. I'm going to grab another group of my Q-tips, and I'm going to work in my yellow. Start with the yellow over here. And the reason I'm going to start with it over here, and then work backwards, is because I want to make sure I get a good crisp yellow at first. And then I'm going to work that back into my orange. And I'm going to flip it over again. And now I'm going to get into my green. If you have a color preference, something that you like more than another color, go ahead and make that you know, a color more for yourself. My tree is going to look just like I want my tree to look. Yours is going to look just like you want yours to look. I'm going to add the blue here. Dab that blue up in there. Good. Turn it around. I'm going to add my purple here. Okay. And as you notice down here, we have this. The wind has been blowing. And that's why I haven't taken these apart. Is because we want a little bit 
of each of the leaves in each of the colors to move away. It doesn't matter in which order you do these, because these are the ones that are blowing away in the wind. Just a few. And now we're going to take a moment and I'm going to dry this with the hair dryer and we're going to come back and we're going to put in the last of our branches. Okay, so now that we've dried this off again, we wanted to make sure and that there's a few little spots that we're going to find that where it's a little bit thicker from the dabbing. But for the most part, this is dry. So now we want to work in. We're going to take a smaller brush and we're going to work from our trunk and we're going to put in some of these other smaller branches here. So we're going to come up here. sweeping branch here. We'll have another one that sweeps down here. It's okay if you have to go back in and put in a little bit darker. It's also okay if you want to leave it light. I'm going to put another branch that comes up. Again, we're going to thicken this as it comes out. Here, pull this branch up and thicken this just a little so it really gives a nice look to that. Leave a little of that color coming over the top and then we want to put in some other branches. And remember, everything's sweeping towards that wind. Don't worry if you skip a spot like right here, it's not a problem because that just leaves over the top. Down through here we want our little branches. Some of those branches are on top, some of them are hidden. I think we'll just put one more branch in here and give him kind of a little broken branch off the top. And that pretty much, I think, is going to cover, I might try one little one here. Put that last little branch in there and turn that. And so that gives you that whole look. So what do we have left to do? I think we just need to sign our pretty artwork and put it on the wall and enjoy it. I hope this has been as much fun for you as it has for me. I always enjoy getting together.